Thank you, guys. If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good. And wasn't Dan Mace really just an interesting guy doing some great things? You know, and to think, John, that it all started out way back in the 70s when uh, it was kind of like the hippie thing to do to recycle. And now after talking to Dan, I mean, if you don't understand the importance of keeping things out of landfills. If you didn't understand that before, I think hopefully you do now. Yeah, and the whole concept of zero waste and all of us holistically moving towards zero waste. Dan laid out a great proposition for all of us and great inspiration, so I hope all of us can continue to move in every sector, in every seat that we're in, move us all towards zero waste. Totally agree, John. Totally agree. And, you know, our next guest uh, is, again, another. This is a whole other subject, Mike, that we've never covered before. The, the issue of bulk buying and and that being a green, uh, you know, opportunity for all of us. So listen to this commercial and come on back to Green is Good. If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're so honored today to have with us on Green is Good, Clint Landis, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at Frontier National Products Co-op. Welcome to Green is Good. Thank you. Glad to be here. Hey, Clint, you know, everybody that we have on this show are just some of the greenest rock stars throughout the uh, green revolution industry, cutting across all different verticals. And most of your journeys are all fascinating, much more fascinating than me sitting here and taking 20 minutes of our precious time to read your bio. Why don't you share a little bit your unique journey with our listeners? Because there's lots of young listeners out there, Clint, that want to be the next Clint Landis, that want to be the next visionary or leader in your sector. So share your journey a little bit before we get into talking about what you do day to day. Okay, well, thank you. Um, yeah, I started out, uh, I got my uh, master's degree in marketing uh, from the University of Iowa. I won't say exactly how many years ago, but it was quite a few. <laughs> and I started out in the food industry and um, as a brand manager in the conventional food. And then I got a call one day from a headhunter about this uh, little co-op in, uh, in eastern Iowa that was uh, looking for a marketer to work on their aromatherapy business uh, called Oracacia. And uh, I said, well, you know what, that sounds interesting. So I, I, I went there, and, and that was in 1993, and, uh, and I'm still here today. And uh, it's just been a, a, real, a real treat to work in an industry where there's things that, uh, A, you know, that are more important than just making money, and that you can make great products, um, and you can do it in a, in, in a you know, natural, organic way, and also that you can, you can make a difference through sustainability in both packaging and how you source. And uh, so it's really, it's, it's a treat to work in this industry. And the great thing about it also is it's a growing industry. And so uh, that's a great place for a marketer to be. And you're also the, you know, you're so very humble. You're also the founding member of the Bulk is Green Council, which we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, that's, that's, well, I'm one of the two. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and so, you know, this is the first time, and we've had so many wonderful guests on this show, and we're just, Mike and I are so honored and blessed in so many ways that to be able to share all of you leaders of the Green Revolution with our listeners around the world. But this is the first time we've ever hit on this issue. Talk a little bit about what was the genesis behind co-founding the Bocas Green Council, and what does the Bocas Green Council really do? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, our company, Frontier Natural Products Co-op, we started as a uh, supplier of bulk herbs and spices. I mean, that's okay. that's how we started back in 1976. Okay. And still today, even though we do bottled spices and we do aromatherapy, as I mentioned earlier, our bulk business is still our largest uh, business. And, um, you know, we were just talking about bulk, and, and I was meeting, having dinner at Expo West, which is a natural products um, exposition out in Anaheim, and I was um, sitting down with um, with uh, Scott uh, Johnson from Trade Fixtures. They build all those those pull bin displays that are in the bulk section, and we were just talking about how to get the word out there about all the great advantages of buying bulk. Because you know, bulk was a really big thing in the '60s and the '70s in <clears throat> co-op stores and things like that. And there's still a lot of things today about bulk that people maybe don't understand or maybe they're a little intimidated by it. So we wanted to kind of 
just figure out a way to get to consumers and to explain to them what all the great benefits of buying uh, your organic foods in bulk. Got it, got it, got it. So then when did you start this exactly again? So that was in March of 2008, and not too long after that, we decided that we'd put together this Bulk is Green Council, <laughs> and we uh, recruited a number of other companies. And so today we have Frontier, we have Lundberg Family Farms, we have the Haines Celestial Group, and we have Sunridge Farms along with Trade Fixtures. And as an organization, we meet and we discuss different ways to uh, educate consumers and the trade about the advantages of, of buying in bulk, which we'll get into in just a minute. And but. Yeah, and that's wonderful because, you know, these are all amazing and wonderful brands. We've actually had uh, a Lundberg family member on our show talking about the great work Lundberg Farms does. So we're just so glad to have you today and then also tie it into the Bulkers Green Council. And for our listeners out there that, you know, Mike and I right now, Clint, are on your beautiful and wonderful and very green website, <laughs> www bulkisgreen.org. So we're going to talk about that today, but also just for our listeners, if you've got your iPad or laptop in front of you like Mike and I do, or your desktop, um, go to this website. Clint and his team have done a wonderful, very descriptive, very informative job at this website, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. So talk a little bit about now, you know, National Bulk Foods Week, which is upon us, coming upon us right now, and how out of the Bulk is Green Council, you then created this National Bulk Foods Week, and why did you do that? Well, really, National Bulk Foods Week was a, a vehicle that we, that we thought we could use to educate uh, and celebrate right. um, buying your foods in bulk. And so, you know, we sat around and we just we came up with, you know, this is deserving of that, and if we can get stores around the country to participate um, and, and really make this a consumer event, that we can really, as a, you know, as a country, we can work together to um, really celebrate the things that are so great about buying in bulk because, you know, bulk foods in this day and age are more relevant than they ever have been. And I, and I think that, you know, one of the things, there, there's a number of things people don't understand about buying in bulk, and it's just because they haven't done it yet. And, um, but everything from, you know, saving on packaging, which has never been more important than it is today. Right. Saving money. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't need to save money that's, that, in, in, you know, with the economy the way it is? Bulk right. is a phenomenal way to save money. It's also a way to experiment, you know, and try right. foods maybe you hadn't tried before because you only have to buy a tiny amount. Right. It's not like, you, you know, you're <laughs> going into a club store and you have to buy 32 <laughs> rolls of, uh, Great you know, point. paper towels. Uh, right. Buying in bulk means you can buy a pinch or a pound. Right. And so, anyway, there's – so we thought, okay, let's get – natural food stores and grocery chains across the country to participate in National Bulk Foods or, or National Bulk Foods Week, put signage up in the stores, we'll offer promotions to the stores on, on, on our products that we supply, and let's get people into that section and start experiencing the fun and all the benefits associated with bulk. Got it, got it, got it. So, so then how do you engage, you know, besides this great website, how do you engage shoppers to, like, really do this and start understanding that, like you said, a pinch or a pound, it's really not about buying 40 rolls of toilet paper and a, and a thousand cans of soda. How, you know, what, how do you get, the, you know, our listeners involved? How can our listeners get involved? Well, a couple of ways. You know, one of the first things we did as the Bulk is Green Council is we developed a couple of uh, YouTube videos. And the purpose of those was to help people get over maybe a little bit of concern about not understanding how to go into a bulk aisle and what you do and how you measure it and things like that. And so on YouTube, if you type Bulk is Green Council, you'll find a couple of videos. One of them is how to shop in bulk. And it'll just make it, you know, real easy for you to understand, A, how simple it is, and so when you go in there, you don't have to be afraid to try it because there's no reason to be. And then there's another video on there that shows, the, you know, how much time and money you can save by buying, by buying in bulk. So that's one way. They can first just be familiar with, with uh, how to shop in bulk. Then find your local store that carries bulk. I mean, they're all over. There's ten, tens of thousands of stores that carry bulk, you know, so find that store. And if you can't find it, you can go to our website under um, latest news, and it says it has a list of stores that are participating in the National Bulk Foods Week. And they're going to have those specials, and they're going to have those point-of-purchase displays and materials about National Bulk Foods Week. And we have over 700 stores across the country that are participating. Well, you know, one of the things that I absolutely love, in 
case you're just joining us right now, we're on the phone with Clint Landis. And Clint is the chief marketing officer at Frontier National Foods Co-op. Clint, uh, one of the stores that I shop, and there's two really where I go. One, of course, is a, a, a big box store, a club store. Uh, but uh, the other grocery store that I go to has a tremendous bulk food section. I mean, you're talking about dried fruits. You're talking about beans, legumes, just everything that you could possibly think of. And most of my grocery shopping, when I come home, most of the stuff is bulk that we buy. And my wife and I just absolutely love shopping that way. Well, we appreciate that plug. And I think that's <laughs> another thing that you bring up is it's fun. Yeah. 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 It really is. You get to experience the food yeah. in a way that you can't when you're, something's inside of a package that's inside of a cardboard box that's sitting on a sterile shelf. Um, so you're, you're there experiencing it, and you're smelling it, and you're, you're actually seeing the product. And, um, yeah. and I'm sure you also appreciate the fact that you're saving 30 to 60% you know, on the products that you're buying. Sure, especially if, when it comes to spices. I mean, if, if we need like just a dash of basil or something, you know, we can always, uh, we got our little herb garden going, but there are certain things like a pinch of saffron. You don't really need a pound of that. No. And as expensive a spice as that is, it really, your pinch or a pound is exactly right on. Yeah, and I think that your, your other point about variety, um, uh, the variety within a bulk section, as you mentioned, is, is immense. And uh, whether it's your cereal or your grains or, you know, your gluten-free oats or your spices or your chocolates or whatever, I mean, or nuts, um, it's really, it's really a very, uh, very broad selection. You know, on your website, bulkisgreen.org, I love the landing page because the picture there is exactly how it really is. You know, when you see a beautiful aisle of bulk foods like that, as you pointed out earlier, Clint, to, to, to try new foods or to try a new trail mix or to try something because it's so visual and it's so much fun to shop that way instead of through, you know, all this mm, fancy packaged material that is, uh, you know, uh, high, highly stylized, but you know, truly actually hides the transparency of the quality of the product. Um, it, it, it's just a great, great photo on the landing page there. You know, talk a little bit about, you know, what my, you know, people, profits, and planet. You know, those are the like three major legs of sustainability that Mike and I focus here. And go back, you know, Clint, talk a little bit about the selfishness, the selfish good reasons for our listeners in the United States and around the world, frankly, to shop in bulk. Talk a little bit about the bottom line and other benefits to all three of those, um, you know, major points of sustainability that bulk shopping really hit upon. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think from a people standpoint, there's, there's a couple things. First of yeah. all, um, you know, we're offering consumers a chance to, to really save, to really um, expand their, their, um, their budget. And, um, you know, like I said before, 30 to 60 percent is a general, although it can be a lot more than that. Saving money. Yeah, it, but it's, it's, it's real money, and that's really important today, particularly for families right on. Um, that are going through tough times. Right. The other thing about our organization is we really promote organic, mm -hmm. and all of our founding members are, are organic um, suppliers. And um, what you find in the, in, the, in the bulk section in these natural food stores is, is mostly organic and natural products. And so, as we all know, that's a very important uh, issue for our planet today. And, uh, so, and then the other issue related to our planet is just this packaging issue, you know, what, I'll give you an example on buying in bulk versus buying a packaged product. In, let's say, a cereal box, um, a, cereal, a box of cereal, uh, the packaging would weigh about 73 grams for a, a typical box of cereal. Right. If you were to go into a natural food store and buy what you need in the same amount and put it in the bag and bring it home, you're talking about 3 grams of packaging. So you literally are, are talking about a reduction of 70 grams of packaging with each purchase. So you can replace 1 million boxes with bags and save 70 tons of waste in, in, um, in, household, in the household waste stream. And that's just, that's just one example. So when we wow. talk about the planet, we're talking about organic and natural products. We're talking about um, packaging reduction. We're also talking about freight. You know, when you're shipping uh, heavy packaging from the manufacturer to the distributor and then to the store, that costs money, and you're shipping a lot of air. Mm. When, you, when we ship bulk products to our um, retail stores, 
you're shipping the actual product. You're not shipping a lot of air. So now all of a sudden you're saving, you know, in terms of carbon offset, you know, carbon use. And so, you know, there's another savings there. That's, um, that's, so, that's so important that people don't realize that, but I'm so glad you pointed that out. Also, isn't there a food reduction waste also? Yeah, that, that was the other one I was going to get to. You know, if you buy something and you use a third of it and you throw it away, either it gets expired or whatever, um, that's a waste. And so with bulk, this ability to buy a pinch or a pound um, really gives you the flexibility to buy just what you need. And so now we're throwing away less good food, and uh, that just helps everybody. Gotcha. And besides you, talk a little bit about the other organizations that are really involved with the, you know, the bulk uh, council, you know, the bulk foods council uh, that our listeners would want to hear about. You know, obviously Frontier is and uh, Lumbergs and others. Who else that we would know, or who else should should our listeners be tuning into and tuning into their brands? Well. Um... You know, there's a number of other brands. Uh, before I get to that, I would also just mention sure. that um, the other people that they need to support are those local grocery stores and natural food stores that are carrying, okay, that are offering bulk sets. Um, for example, Wegmans and Tops and Richards and the National Cooperative Grocers Association. These are all chains that yeah. are um, that are helping support the National Bulk uh, Bulk Week. And so, um, but there, yeah, there are a number of other companies. I, as I mentioned before, Sunridge Farms is a, is a supplier of a wide variety of. Um, actually, I could even, if it would, if it would help, I could even um, list a couple of things that some of these companies offer. So you yeah, absolutely, know go ahead. Exactly what they're what what they offer. So you know, cereals and and candy and things like that. The Haynes Celestial Group, which we talked about, Sunridge Farms has nuts, seeds, trail mixes, granola, um, grains, and beans. And then at Frontier, of course, we have the herbs and spices. We also have um, bulk teas, and, and hmm. teas is a really cool thing to buy in bulk because not only do you get to experience it and you get that great selection, but you're also buying the highest quality tea. It's a whole leaf tea. And so for $0.25 cents a cup, you can buy what you need and really experience a really high-quality tea as opposed to maybe something that comes in a bag. And then, of course, as you mentioned, Lundberg, the, really the leader in rice, um, is, is another great supplier. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, Trade Fixtures, I guess, which makes the bins. But those are, those are kind of the major bulk suppliers today. Perfect. You know, so now you have this National Bulk Foods Week coming up. How has the movement grown since you've started this whole thing and started the council in 2008 or so? How, you know, how has it evolved and how is it evolving in partnership and is the movement growing? Are you getting more brands? Are you getting more families? Are you getting more stores? How, you know, how long did it take you? To, obviously, three years to get the 700 stores. What's your goal? A couple thousand a year from now or two years from now? What, what, where's this moving towards? Yeah, well, we, we couldn't be happier with the growth from last year because last year we had seven stores participating. Yeah, you've done good, it looks like. 693 <laughs> uh, extra. Good for you, Clint. It wasn't such a huge disappointment because we really <laughs> knew that the first year we just had to, to learn. And so we went from seven stores last year to 700 this year, and I'd like to double that next year. And uh, because there's over 10,000 of these stores out there. And so. Wow. And, and the other neat thing that we got this year is we have seven states that have um, made state proclamations that uh, October 16th through the 22nd is um, National Bulk Foods Week. And so we even had some states that, that participated with us, and we'll get a lot more of them next year as well. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Whoa. Um, and so uh, your, your other council members and others, are you also growing in terms of besides the stores and besides the movement getting more and more publicity – uh, in terms of more groups joining, more brands joining, how's that going? Are you do you want to have fifty brands be part of your council, or is this a good group, um, a good number? How does that work in terms of uh, you know decision making and also growth and democratization of the whole uh, you know movement? That's a, that's a really good question, and I don't have what I know is the the um, <laughs> the exact correct answer. What I can tell you is yeah. that we feel pretty comfortable with the ability the ability to manage the group at the size that we are today. And while it's true that all bulk companies benefit from the work we do, because we're not out promoting our own products necessarily, we're really out promoting bulk as a, as a category, but when you're, 
when you're just kind of volunteering as a, as a, as a group and it, it takes a certain amount of people's time and coordination, that if it were to get too big, it might become difficult to manage and you'd start to enter other things outside of just growing bulk foods. And so I, right now we would certainly invite other members, but we are not really actively pursuing more. But um, that could change down the road. We're, we're, we, you know what? We've been working together since 2008. Right. Feel like we work really well together. We're right. on the same page. Right on. Making progress, and so I'm not sure we want to yeah. change that formula too much. You know, given that our show is heard uh, and people download it uh, off of the iTunes network in Paris and in Brazil and in Shanghai and in Seoul, is this a movement that you feel? that is growing around the world, or did, was it really a movement that started in other countries and we're now just bringing it here to the United States? Um, well, that's interesting that you bring that up. As I mentioned at the very, your very first question, you asked yeah. me how this started. It was yeah. myself and Scott Johnson talking, and he had brought up to me that there was something called the RAP study, which was done in the U.K., oh. and the RAP study, which is on our website, you can, you can download it, was a, uh, the first attempt at a quantitative measure of the savings um, of, of bulk, not only, not only the savings to the consumer, but also the, the environmental savings um, in, in packaging and freight. And he was talking to me about that, and we started, you know, like, we got to get this out to people. And so that actually came from the U.K. And then, um, so, yes, it, it certainly is, um, is it definitely in other countries, and, and it and, and the other thing is we have now just signed up Portland State University, and some of the funds from the Bulk is Green Council are going to them to perform an additional study here in the states that quantifies um, these savings and uh, the environmental impact of bulk. So we're very excited about having some results next year to publish about that. So for the upcoming National Bulk Foods Week and for others around the United States and around the world that want to get more involved with this, I you know, I know I've I've read uh, you know that you have some tips and to commemorate this week coming up. Can you share with our listeners things that they can do to really sort of like jump in and and feel that uh, you know, you know, dip their toe in and really get part of this? Yeah, I mean, get on our website, find a store that's participating, go in the store Take a friend with you. You know, watch the video. Learn how to shop in bulk. Take a friend with you and go in together and shop the bulk, the bulk aisle. You know, um, quantify how much you saved while you were there. And then tell your friends and put it on your Facebook and Twitter it and talk to people about your experience in buying bulk. You know, with social media today, it's such an awesome platform for smaller companies like us and for consumers to, to share with them those things. And I, you know what the thing about bulk and the reason it's fun to tell other people and take them to the store, there's nothing bad about it. <laughs> Let's see. It saves money. It's better for the earth. It's organic. It tastes great, and it's fun. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to share that with somebody? That's a win on every, every level. That is just such a win. Talk a little bit about your own brand, the, the Frontier Natural Products. Uh, you know, given that, you know, it seems as though the green revolution is starting to get some wind in its back here in the United States, whether it's solar or wind or whether it's recycling uh, or whether it's eating more organic or whether it's even eating more vegan food, um, you know, or eating, you know, under those, um, you know, rules and procedures. What, how does that affect what you're doing at Frontier National Products and how have you seen the growth of, of your uh, company? Yeah, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, since 1976, we've been committed to all, these, all the things that are now become popular to talk about, like sourcing sustainably, like recycling, like reducing emissions, like offering products that are organic and not treated with pesticides and fertilizers. These are things that we did in 76, when, whether anybody cared about it or not. <laughs> and so it's really hasn't, we haven't changed at all. You know, we're exactly the same as we used to be. It's just now consumers, all the things that we were doing back then just because we wanted to are now resonating with consumers. And so it hasn't been us having to change our story or shift to the moving tide of what consumers are talking about or the media or any of those kinds of things. And it, that's true of many natural food companies. It's not just a frontier phenomenon. We just stayed right where we were, and people started coming this direction. And, and it's not a surprise, right? It's right. not a surprise that over time people want products that aren't treated with ethylene oxide and chemical fumigants. And I mean, isn't that it just it's common sense that over time people are going to start moving that direction. So we just stay put.
That stuff sounds scary, by the way. I don't know what it is, but man, that you just scared me. Um, you <laughs> it know, is scary. Yeah, we have you know, but you know, Clint. The one, th- the other great thing about having great people like you on as our guests, Mike and I, you know, the young people wanted these the whole generation of young folks that when they listen to this show and they're on a college campus or they're in graduate school or they uh, are in their first job but they realize they really want to go do something else where they could change the world every day, you know, share with our listeners, look backward a little bit, how if our listeners are typically going to listen to the show and they're going to email Mike and I, how do I become the next Clint Landis? Share some of your pearls of wisdom on, you know, not only your journey, but some of the pearls that you've learned from it in terms of our young listeners out there that want to really, you know, take your place one day at that right juncture. Well, that's a great question. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think as a, I'm going to speak as a marketer, you know, because sure. that's what I am. Yeah. I think as a marketer, you have to remember, I mean, if you have a passion for the for the channel and the industry, that's great, and it's definitely a plus. But as a marketer, you it's it's not that much different in that you have to understand who your consumer is, you have to understand how to differentiate yourself and your company from others, and you have to figure out a way to add value um, through your brands. And then, and that's that's typical even among you know. Um, conventional or some of the large CPG companies. The fourth element, though, that if you're in our industry, is that there's a huge connection between doing good um, and growing your brand. Mm. And that may not be true for other brands out there, really large brands, but I think that you have to, A, you got to have the fundamentals of marketing. You can't, it's not a matter of just coming in, shooting from the hip and doing things. You still have to do the research. You still have to know that you're making money, a, a margin that makes sense. You still have to understand your customers. So it's, there's still a lot of hard work and a lot of quantitative work. Now, once you've recognized that you still have to do that, that fourth element, that cool part, which is, <laughs> making the world better and still being able to do it under the under a, a profitable um, company right that's the one that really makes it fun and it, it appeals to certain people uh, but you still got to have your background and it's still a lot of hard work and um, but you know if you commit yourself to it and you love the industry um, it's a great combination and obviously you've got it all going because you love what you do you could just comes across in your voice Clint and you are always welcome to come back on green is good Mike and I unfortunately are out of time today but like we said good luck with the upcoming um, you know bulk week uh, for bulk foods week and and anytime you want to talk more about the bulk is green council and all the great work that you're doing you have an open invitation to come back on here Clint Landis you are a visionary and sustainability leader and truly living proof that green is good. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity, and keep up the good work. This program will be available for downloading in a couple of days from our station's website, Keyword Podcast. Thanks for listening, and join us again next week at the same time for another edition of Green is Good.